second conversation for today. The conversation is about the upcoming World Blood Donor Day. And here to talk to us more about uh, blood donation and uh, what we're doing here in Belize, we have the president of the executive committee of the Belize Volunteer Blood Donors Association and Adrian Martinez, who's the supervisor of the Belize National Blood Transfusion Service, which we also call the Blood Bank. Good morning, Good gentlemen. Morning. Good, Good morning. Good morning. All right. So uh, World Blood Donor Day is usually celebrated in the middle of June. And I know that um, it's probably not a, an activity that people have been thinking of during the time of COVID, I'd imagine. How have things been going at the blood bank? Well, blood donation is still ongoing, regardless of the restrictions we have from ministry. Um, it's a challenge. We have been through many challenges. However, this is one of the one that have really taken most of our donors mm -hmm. and our blood donations. Um, we have a average amount of blood donors so far. Our voluntary blood donors are still coming. That's the good okay. point of it. Um, we have good communication with them. Um, we're collecting on a daily basis, let's say like 20 units of blood. Our countrywide or in Belize? Uh, excuse me? Countrywide or in Belize City? Uh, I'm only in Belize City. Okay. That's a daily. daily. Okay. Um, countrywide, that would be like around um, 340 to 500 units per month. Okay. That's a total. Okay. The volunteer would be like 10% of it. Yeah. So we see that the the percentage for volunteers are still coming in. Um, the communication is still good. Yeah. Um, the so, demand is as needed. Um, most of the emergencies cases are just de de dealing with in the hospitals, yeah. and um, routines are being cancelled. Eventually, all of those are picking up. So we're dealing. It's going good so far, yeah. and. Um, it's a good, um, we were never devastated like, like the other countries where the blood, when it was very short. And um, so far we're doing good and we're trying to accommodate as much um, blood to the persons that are sick and they don't have no blood. So um, that include our blood drives and um, our blood donors who come in voluntary. So you know, Adrian, we uh, definitely, um, I think, had a lull in violent crimes um, during the lockdown phase. So you weren't seeing uh, shootings and you weren't seeing stabbings and you weren't seeing uh, traffic accidents, which we know can take up a lot of the resources from the blood bank. But now that people are moving around, and in fact, we have been reporting more frequently on um, violent incidents, I'd imagine your demand will be going back up. Yes, eventually we have seen the percentage rising up. However, um, there is still not much as before because um, at times the hospital will request a good amount of blood units because um, there were gun, gunshot victims. So it has drastically, um, it has been reduced and um, we're coping with what we have and so far at this point we are we're handling mm -hmm. and you know talking about world blood donors day 2020 um, the theme for this year's um, day is safe blood saves lives give blood and make the world a healthier place so to put the conversation sort of further in context and uh, perhaps Ronald you can talk to us a little bit about the importance of uh, blood donation and the efforts that um, the Belize Volunteer Blood Donors Association uh, does. Ronald, do we have? Is he hearing us? Our Ronald? I'm not hearing the audio too oh. well. It's, it's low, but um, the association continues to try and get uh, prospective donors to be involved in the supply as 
it's the only source that is available. Um, we continue, one of the, the big challenge that we have um, currently is the fact that with the lockdown, there couldn't have been any sort of movement. And now that we are, that some of the restrictions are being relaxed, persons are still engaged in their own survival and the necessities of making sure that they are providing for their essential needs. So it's a continuation of the, the, the challenge where persons would not necessarily have the blood bank or blood donations as a priority. It becomes a priority when the need exists either for a relative, a friend, or a colleague, and they would um, turn to the blood bank or to ourselves. In, in the past few weeks, I've gotten a lot of calls for persons who are looking for donations. And as I've had to say in those instances and in, on many occasions, that we need donors to make uh, or to, for the bank to have its supply. Yeah. And therefore, it is important that we do as much as we can. And one of the things that, as you have done to, to have us virtually, the sessions that we would have for education may need to use this platform or other platforms as such. Yeah. Because the need does not change. Mm -hmm. It just comes with a challenge where instead of meeting in person or with the continued relaxation, um, maybe smaller groups, um, as companies and organizations continue to seek their survival. So yeah. let, me, let, me, let me dive into some numbers here, because Adrian said they're receiving somewhere around, or over 300 um, blood the, the donations. The order is very low. I'm not hearing you well. Yeah. OK. So I'll just talk a bit louder. It may be, I, I'm, getting right, yes. a, I'm getting a notice that it might be on your end, so you'll have to check and see if your speaker is up. Um, well, I, I have my other turn, turn up all the way. Okay. Sorry, go ahead, though. So I was saying that the numbers that we're getting um, from Adrian is saying over 300 donations per month across the country. Um, and out of that, it's only 10% uh, uh, that is voluntary. And that means people just go to give, to contribute towards the stuff that exists. Over the years, we seem to have been unable to move that number. We're not getting that many people interested in being voluntary donors. Why do you think that is? Um, I, I think a lot of persons don't necessarily um, understand or sometimes appreciate the importance ascribed to um, blood donations when there isn't a need or when it doesn't Im immediately impact themselves or those who they care about. Yeah. And so it's an ongoing um, exercise, it's an ongoing effort that we talk to organizations because we want to make sure that we are increasing the efficiencies um, in terms of reaching a number of persons all at once. Um, I could do a session for one person, but then if you if you have a session where 50 persons are, are being informed, sensitized, and their awareness is raised, um, it makes it more likely that you'll have more persons um, giving a donation mm -hmm. through those instances. So we need to continue to, to talk and I must um, say thanks to you, Marlene, and to Channel 5 for your continued collaboration with us because yeah. um, being in the media, it helps the message to get out far more effectively um, and efficiently than we could do mm -hmm. on our own. And it, it, it doesn't, um, I mean, I think we have such a young population. It seems somewhat uh, easy to imagine that we could have a larger base of voluntary donors I believe uh, Dr. Jorge Polanco has joined the conversation. Doc, are you there? He's on mute. So uh, Dr. Jorge Polanco is the yes. non-communicable disease focal point for PAHO. 
And uh, Dr. Polanco, I'd love to get you to weigh in on this conversation about how we're doing in, in our own uh, blood stock in Belize. Um, well, I think that question in regards to our own blood stock, I could give you my perspective, but of course a better person would have been Mr. Adrian. But from what I have seen over the recent years, the stock of blood and blood products at the blood bank, I would say it has been satisfactory. There are two systems which um, is well known to you, are well known, the replacement system and the voluntary uh, blood uh, donations, which... Uh, as Mr. Stewart said, has been a challenge and is of much concern. But the reality is that if, even though we have, have a low proportion, the replacement system has been working in, yes. in such a way that we managed to fulfill the demand. But of course, in more details as to um, specific challenge, Mr. Martinez would be in a better position to, yeah. to, to respond to the yeah. Adrian? Yeah, the basically the challenge is uh, it's a social responsibility. Every uh, and, uh, most important is the is advertised. Um, most of the time, our donors does not know uh, the information or where to donate blood, and uh, it's a chain that. Starts more to the other, and especially uh, and poor infrastructure and um, other little things. However, the more important is that is the around the information, educational information when it comes to donation, um, the reason and the importance of um, when you can get blood, the criteria you need. Um, you're a female or if you are male, if you're a male then they have different criteria that yeah. need to address so yeah. most of the time uh, people might have um, other concerns no yeah. however um we did our um and find out it's more uh, advertisement and educational information that needs to be um sent to the public and um every year we realize that um with, along with PAF and all the other stakeholders uh, in geomarginal actuals grow up and doing blood drive. However, um, there's much more to be done. Mm -hmm. So that's why yeah. at this moment. Much you more know, to be done. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, Dr. Polanco, since we are still sort of on the topic of spreading awareness and education, perhaps for the benefit of our viewers, I think that perhaps in light of what Marlene said, it's true that we do have a young uh, population, and so the need may not be readily apparent to all of us. So uh, perhaps you can um, shed a little bit of light on, in terms of um, how much uh, or how often blood is needed and what situations, um, me medical situations, I should say, um, a person might need a blood transfusion or they might need other, th other things because people might think, oh, maybe only it, 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 the need is not so great. But perhaps you can shed a bit of light on it um, for our viewers so that they're aware of um, how important it is that blood, that blood donations continue. Yeah, um, very, very interesting question and of much relevance to Belize. Uh, one of the areas that needs a significant amount of transfusion is the maternal and child health um, services, the hospitalized services. It's a well, it's, it's a known fact that um, normally uh, there would be a significant amount of transfusions to women in the moment of having delivery or a C-section. And of course, for neonates or newborns, there are many pathologies, many, many health problems that require the transfusion as part of the treatment as part of the management. Um, that is one area that, that is there always uh, very important. And we also have the, the, the other areas, uh, I would say the uh, medical and surgical aspects. Um, violence is is well known to everybody that it's, a, it's an area, it's a health problem that requires much of the medical services, the surgical services, 
and at the same time, uh, related to its management, blood transfusions are always a part of that um, yeah. of those emergencies. However, the the provision of the blood donations to surgical a uh, um, surgical cases is normally done through the replacement system. However, at the moment of transfusion, the blood is given by the health facility yeah. on the emergency moment. And then the, the relatives or friends will find a replacement for that unit used. Yeah. But so these are areas, the violence in general, road traffic accidents, homicides, uh, um, accidents, work-related accidents, and as I mentioned, the maternal and child health. We also have a blood disorders like hemophilia, sickle cell, mm -hmm. that require in a very constant manner the, the use of blood as part of the management. And um, the, these persons would have friends who would normally give, especially if it's a special time that is not too common, and they would secure those friends and, and um, for the provision of this special type. But generally speaking, they are constant users. And they, I am aware of the fact that many times they will run out of friends and they would have to rely exclusively on the on this staff available at the blood bank. Yeah. So these are perhaps the most common areas, um, a chronic blood disorders, the maternal and natural health, the newborns with um, blood disorders and, and violence, um, health problems related to violence in general. And these are needs on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. So when you, when you look at it all in, in, uh, as the bigger picture, um, you know, there's always room for more volunteers. That's, that's the, the classic statement that I hear you guys making. Um, but for now, we haven't run into a situation where uh, you haven't been able to provide the blood that is needed. Are there any uh, concerns that during a pandemic, during this pandemic, um, that people may feel wary about going into any place that is dealing with health issues voluntarily? I didn't get the last part. Um, I mean, for, for people to go in and donate blood during a pandemic, are they still comfortable doing so? Do they have COVID-19 concerns? Well, the reality is that there should be a constant effort to keep the provision of blood donation open, um, even though there are restrictions in regards to movement and distancing yeah. and, and the lockdown that we have passed uh, one or two phases already. But the, the emphasis is to provide safe blood. That's, that's the underlying principle yeah. that um, the blood bank should have available safe blood and in order to do this the issue of promoting voluntary donation is fundamental yeah. uh, mr adrian would, would expand on the screening that is done on a very routine basis a very comprehensive basis for uh, the donations that come from volunteers or the replacement um, donors but um it's also a known fact, scientifically proven, that the risk is much less in, in having a stack coming from volunteers. A, if you are a volunteer, you are sensitized, you are informed as to what should be a, a healthy behavior, what should be a responsible a, a sexual, a sexuality behavior, um, so the, these persons tend to be healthy, which means that the risk of having uh, a disease or a, 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 an infection that would mm -hmm. be a problem to the safety of the blood is much, much lower than the replacement donors. Yeah. Even though there is a screening tool, which is used on absolutely every case at the blood bank, mm -hmm. the possibility for persons in that moment of stress to, to not be truthful is there. Yeah. I, w I would prefer Mr. Adrian to expand on that. But um, um, coming back to the issue of pandemic, the COVID-19 should not really be a, a, an obstacle for the blood bank mm -hmm. to have access to um, 
blood donors need a replacement. And of course, the ideal thing would be to have voluntary donors. I know that the restrictions of movement over the last few weeks um, definitely had um, an impact on the blood bank doing blood drives. But I think this is passing. And I'm very, very sure that there are ways, as we speak, to still have those blood drives and to still have the public come up as volunteers to, to give blood at the blood bank, either in Belize City or at the district level, either in Belize City. Yeah. So th there is a blood drive, though, coming up. San Pedro is going to be doing one. Uh, let's talk about the activities for World Blood Donor Day. Um, for the day, it we well, because it falls on a sun, Sunday, this mm -hmm. coming Sunday, um, the activities are being done tomorrow and on Monday, um, recognizing donors who, who come in. And um, quite appropriate for this time is to provide them with a face mask with the logo of the association mm -hmm. in um, expressing a, a small token um, for their continued um, support of the work that we do. Um, beyond that, we, we need to, as I mentioned earlier, the, the need to look at how we could continue to do these education sessions um, when there are the restrictions. Um, you know, while it has increased from 10 to 14, it's supposed to be increased, increased again in terms of public gatherings. Um, there's still the, the restrictions of six feet apart and the locations where we need to meet might not necessarily have that sort of space allowances. So I, I think it's um, critical that we continue to explore the ways and support or to get support from the wider community because after all, the work that we do is for the benefit of um, individuals within the community. And for those persons who are viewing and have considered but have not yet acted on it, yeah. I would encourage you, um, being a donor myself, well, now I'm completing 25 years this year, and I have done, I, I've given close to 80 donations over that time. It's something that I am gratified about. And yeah. If you know that you could do something that benefits someone else's um, life and the lives of those who they interact with, whether they are family um, or whatever the level of interaction, like the neighbors, uh, co-workers, it is important. It's invaluable. And I simply do it because I can. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's one of the key points not, that, that we have to get out here. So. You know, one, um, you can donate blood and you save three lives. That's that's the right. message that usually yeah. um, goes out. Um, and it's also um, something that you can do once you're healthy enough and you pass through the screenings, um, just as your contribution to the wider society. I mean, you've been doing it for 25 years. Uh, I think it's time that we, we start to get more people on board too. What would you say to them just uh, in, in one sentence? that what difference does it make when you have voluntarily give blood, uh, given blood um, and helped to save other people? How does it make you feel? I, it's, it's, um, it's something that I am proud of. Um, you know, I don't have to get any accolades for it. It's not, I, I don't look for any yeah. um, attention because I do it. Um, simply by this process, um, we need to inform the public so that they become aware of how important it is. I can only, and any other donor could give a maximum of four times for the year. Yeah. And when you look at the collections that we've had, um, the, the data for last year, it's um, just under 7,000 units that was collected. Mm. But when you look at the number of persons who has given, we could always increase that because yeah. um, the more donors you have, who are able to give makes it easier on the, the, the system in terms of, um, because we have limited resources with which we are working. You know, the, the staffing at the um, blood bank certainly could be increased, yeah. the space out of which they work. 
and so many other things. And when you look at developing a system that could be 100% um, voluntary donations based, it takes from policy of um, the administration and all the partners along the chain yeah. to ensure that something like that happens that whenever I hear persons um, asking for donations through the various mediums, um, I say, if only we could take it more personal and say, what can I do? Yeah. Um, how can I help? Well, and I, I'm glad you bring when up that you, point, Ronald, that, because there, I there's think, no let, me, let, me just, let me just pick up on that material. point there. So people are always online asking for donations, and I think the impression it gives, um, while I know you're very clear about explaining replacement and donor, but when we see people begging on the media and we see them on social media begging for people to go get blood, it really gives the impression to many that, that we don't have enough uh, blood supply. So it's actually kind of switching um, perspectives and saying to people, well, if we had more people volunteering, then we'd have less people begging. Is that what you're saying? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very simple thing. You know, it's a matter of supply and demand. Yeah. yeah. At certain times of the year or um, in certain events, because say, for example, if you were to have a mass casualty accident yeah. or incident, there'll be a need for more um, blood supply. Yeah. And so we have to have persons who are going to be responsive um, or simply have persons who make the decisions to the decision to come in on a regular basis yeah. and when we have that happening the bank has a supply we need to be mindful that because blood is made up of cells that are living it, it could only be kept for 35 days so from the yeah. time it is collected to the time it is used it has to be within that time period um, and we it's it's something that is always ongoing you know, so um, let me, we let me just, don't just really want to collect and then you have to discard mm -hmm. because you cannot use it at a particular time. And, Absolutely. Um, it, even more so for the rare units yeah. or the rare um, blood types like O negative, which yeah. is a universal donor. They could give to anybody, mm -hmm. but they have to get from a fellow Only o -negative, o negative donor. And, you know, um, it, it's, it's one of those situations where raising the awareness, educating the public, and the public um, acting on that information, not waiting until somebody for them that um, they love and are concerned about that needs, but yeah. simply to do what would be beneficial for anybody. So yeah. Adrian, tell us how, who can donate blood and where do they go to donate blood? Marlene? We're having lots of connection problems here. I don't know who's talking. Hello? Hello. Yes. Um, Marlene? Uh-huh. Uh, I came in a few seconds late, but I'm not sure if it was mentioned. But what I want is um, to take the opportunity for the purposes of information to the public. Okay. Um, the, 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 the different diseases that the blood bank screens, screens every yeah. donation. Was it yeah. mentioned? No, no, it hasn't. Okay. Yeah, this is something very important um, that justifies why we really should push more to have volunteers, uh, voluntary donors. Yeah. Normally, every blood bank, every, every donation at the blood bank is screened for malaria, for Chagas disease, which is a disease that um, a parasite infects the heart, makes the heart big, and um, a syphilis, HIV, hepatitis B, mm -hmm. which are, are, are major uh, transmissible diseases. So, and these are all prevalent in Belize. So then once the public knows that that's one of the, re that's, that is just one of the reasons why there's a need to have more volunteers. This would would um, <clears throat> should motivate young people, young adults to become volunteers, 
I am aware of the efforts that is done in Belize in regards to the promotion, but mm -hmm. that pr a percentage has not changed. I think it's still just around or above 10%. Um, in Latin America, the, the, the latest report of the, of the Pan American Health Organization reflected that um, a, over, um, what did we see? It was about 16 countries only, yeah, out of all of the Americas, reported over 90% of voluntary blood donations. Yeah. The rest had much less. And I think in this day that we are celebrating World Blood Donors Day, there are two fundamental reasons. One is to give thanks and to show appreciation to all those voluntary blood donors, yeah. which I know is being done. And at the same time, to encourage those who are not voluntary blood donors to become a doing. In reality, it's, it's not difficult. This is something that we speak every year and we discuss strategies. But at the end of the day, the proportion still remains the same. We have not moved beyond 10%. So the question is, what is it that the country, or, or what is it that is not allowing those strategies to be effective in increasing that, that, um, that proportion? I know the blood drives exist. Uh, in all six districts, but why is it that we still cannot improve that percentage from 10% to, I would say, at least 25% in the next two years and eventually go beyond 50%. I think if we've so, done the numbers before, it's something like just getting 16, uh, it's less than 20 people to donate per day voluntarily that would get us to that target. Sorry, sorry? Yeah. The, Yeah, the connection yeah. is not helping us right yeah. now. But we got to yeah. close off the segment at this point. Um, Adrian, I do want us to get in very clearly who can donate, what age, um, and where they go. I don't Are think we, we're hearing yeah. you either. Um, Marlene, to answer you, since yes. Um, yes. Adrian yes. may be having difficulty with um, his, his audio, um, the age for donations is anywhere between 18 and 65 if you're you're healthy yeah um and you have good muscle tone um you also need to be have no infections whether it's a sore throat cough anything um and it's done at the blood bank in Belize city which is uh, between Carl Krishna Memorial Hospital and the Social Security Office here in the city on Princess Market Drive, yeah. and at the ho government hospitals in the districts. Okay. okay. And how long? It takes like 15 minutes, right? Um, maybe say 20 with the interview and I'm filling out of the... But when you look at the time that you invest, it, makes a difference for someone else's yeah. life. Absolutely. Well, we hope that more people uh, will feel encouraged after this conversation to go out and uh, do their part and donate blood um, and definitely help, as your theme says, uh, make the world a healthier place. Thank you so much for, for joining us this morning. Thank you. All right. Thank you, also. And we're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we are going to be talking to Major Eric Neal about his recent graduation from the Royal Military College of Canada. <laughs>